Sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. So a couple of months ago, I made what is probably the strangest video I've ever made all about the baffling wonder of Jimmy Olsen. Now that video all but tanked, really, but one part did get an interesting response. So let's cut to a clip. There is a celebrity named Don Rickles. I only know who they are because they voice Mr. Potato Head in the Toy Story movies. You uncultured swine! But this cover is like, hey, what if there were two Don Rickles? <laughs> are you ready for this? Two Rickles. One of the weirder ones for sure. Thanks, Jack. So at the time, I didn't realize that this comic book featuring the late great insult comedian Don Rickles was anything of note. Really, I just thought the cover of the comic was funny and it still is, but a lot of you wrote comments saying, hey, Scott, you're gonna wanna dive a little deeper into this one. So thank you to everyone who told me to look into the history behind this comic book, and also, I hate you. Because now I am confident that this is the worst, most disappointing comic book I have ever read. How are you doing, you wonderful nerds? Scott here, and I sold an ad on this video earlier in the month before I knew what I would be talking about. And uh, now I have two days to make something. And this is what I came up with. So no background music, no slick editing. I just want to unpack the absurdity of this comic book. Uh, like I'm giving the world's worst book report at gunpoint. And I'm the one with the gun. You're not allowed to leave. At least not until we hear about my sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. Yeah, I wear glasses sometimes. Not always on camera because I feel like I would be too distractingly gorgeous. But GlassesUSA.com sent me four pairs of their eyeglasses and sunglasses, and uh, they're really great. By cutting out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com offers over 9,000 prescription eyeglasses and sunglasses, including in-house brands and designer brands, at up to 70% off retail prices. So it's all super affordable. Glasses start at just $30 with basic prescription lenses and all contact lens brands are 25% off. Yeah, that's right. They got contact lenses too. You can get anything your eyes need and it's all done online. You don't have to leave your home. Don't know what your prescription is? No worries, they got you covered. GlassesUSA.com has a free prescription scanner app. You can scan your current glasses to find out what your prescription is. It's easy, it's free, and it's so fast. They even have a virtual try-on tool on their website, which helps you find the exact kind of style of frame that you want. I used it to help find the pairs that they sent me. Uh, this is one of them right here. Emily really loves this pair on me because of its unique shape. It's mostly round, but then it's got this like straight part here up by the I don't know, it's really interesting. And of course, we've got some sunglasses as well. Uh, these, I think, are a little bit more summery for me, so I am planning on wearing them exclusively uh, next year during the warmer weather. And these are pretty much my new year-round sunglasses. Uh, I didn't realize it until I tried these on, but both this pair and the other pair are both prescription sunglasses. And that came in handy when we were traveling to my parents' house for Thanksgiving because half of our drive was like staring straight into the sun. I think these, however, might be my favorite pair. True story, I have a magnet on my fridge of me wearing this exact pair of glasses. It was taken in like VidCon 2019, I believe. It has been staring at me for years and I finally decided, you know what? I need a pair of these. I think they make me look like a sexy college professor. Not in this outfit, but from like the neck up. Shopping online at glassesusa.com means a risk-free shopping experience. Free shipping and returns, 100% money back guarantee, and a 365 day product warranty. So head on over to their site using my link in the description below to get yourself some new stylish eyewear. You can even find my specific lenses that I've been showing off using the links in the description below as well and get 65% off of your first pair. Once again, go check out my link in the description below and go treat your eyes. I'm going to be wearing these for the rest of the video. So a little context first. So as you should all know, because I've made countless videos about it this year, in 1970, Jack Kirby left Marvel for a lot of extremely valid reasons that the company still hasn't learned to this day. Hey Marvel, really quickly, please pay your artists. Anyway, Jack Kirby would then go work at DC Comics, which was Marvel's biggest competitor, obviously. And the myth here is that Jack walked in and basically said, give me your lowest selling, your worst performing comic book, and I'm gonna take it and turn it all around. It's gonna be your number one bestseller. You 
Trust me. And that is how he started working on Jimmy Olsen, of all things. But this story is totally apocryphal. It didn't happen. People are probably just confusing it for the story about Jim Steranko taking over the S.H.I.E.L.D. comic book at Marvel. I'm going to do a video about that eventually. Besides, Jimmy Olsen wasn't the worst selling comic at DC. It's not even the worst selling comic book in this apartment. According to the one book I read this year, apparently, Kirby King of Comics by Mark, you know the last name. What did happen is that Jack was invited to pick any current comic and do whatever he wanted with it. Which on the one hand is great. Jack could write and draw literally anything he wanted. But that would mean that the writers and artists who were already working on that comic would have to be kicked off of it so that Jack could take over. Kirby wasn't super comfortable with that. He didn't like the idea of displacing other people's voices for his own. So instead he asked, give me whatever book doesn't currently have someone assigned to it. And that is how Jack Kirby started working on Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, starting with issue number 133. I don't have that issue. Now the higher ups at DC were iffy about Jack retooling, you know, their prized possession, Superman. On the one hand, he could absolutely breathe some new life into the character who had been declining in popularity for the past decade. On the other hand, don't change Superman in any way. This is what they said to Jack. Yeah, we'll bring him on for his, his fresh takes on our characters, but I mean, he's not allowed to use any of them, obviously. <laughs> Especially Superman. They were so terrified that Jack would change Superman, even in the smallest of ways, that in these issues of Jimmy Olsen, you can see how uh, the higher ups at DC made other artists go over Jack's art of Superman to make him more like the familiar kind of Superman that they had, uh, that the audience had already been used to up to this point. In other words, they made the man of tomorrow look like the man of yesterday. And I think you can tell that Jack Kirby got more than a little frustrated with it because uh, there are times like right here where he draws Clark Kent with his back completely turned so that the other artists won't change the way that his face looks. Now look, I don't think there's anything wrong with classic Superman. I think he's great. I think we need more of him these days. But I think it's incredibly insulting to bring on an iconic artist artist known for their distinct style and then paint over it, paint over everything that makes their art unique. But really only for Superman and sometimes Jimmy Olsen, the faces specifically, gotta have those not be so different and unique. It just makes the art in these comic books really weird and disjointed. Sales of Jack Kirby's work on Jimmy Olsen started out really great, really promising. Obviously everyone wanted to know what he was gonna do with all these characters, uh, but then those sales started to decline extremely rapidly. And maybe it was because the readers saw that the higher ups at DC were overly hands on and wouldn't let Jack Kirby be unleashed to his full potential and stopped reading out of disappointment. Or maybe it's because the stories that Jack was writing were bonkers. It was probably both of those things. I mean, the Jimmy Olsen comics before Jack Kirby showed up were not exactly the most cookie cutter superhero action comics, but Jack Kirby's banners had a distinct flavor. They were more confusing than they were wacky, trying to interweave this deep, intricate lore of the DC universe while also attempting to maintain the whimsical nature of Jimmy Olsen. And look, I'm just gonna say it. I don't think Jack Kirby was very good at it. Jimmy's were better off before Kirby got his hands on him. I'm sorry. I know Jimmy Olsen comics are where Darkseid was first introduced, but like that kind of proves my point, doesn't it? Jack Kirby just couldn't help but introduce an enormously dire universe altering threat like Darkseid in a comedy comic book intended for children. But at least Darkseid does fit into to the DC universe as a whole. Uh, the same cannot be said for Goody Rickles. I mean, the man's a reporter, he's a superhero, I guess, and he's a doppelganger to the real life comedian, Don Rickles. And if you're not super familiar about who Don Rickles is, don't worry, uh, because I have done an unnecessary amount of research on the man's history. So in 1948, Don Rickles was honorably discharged from the military and set out to become a, a serious, dramatic actor. But he couldn't really find work doing that, so to pay the bills in the meantime, uh, he started doing stand-up comedy. He wasn't super good at that either, it seems, and uh, people started heckling him constantly at every show. So to combat this, uh, Rickles learned to venomously shout insults back at the noisiest people in the audience. Audience. To his delight and surprise, the crowd loved this. And from that moment on, Rickles worked the ribbing of his audience into his stand-up routine. Good luck to you. I spoke to the people in Bethlehem. They expect you. 
You're a big son of a gun. My gun. You ever think of putting a window on your face and becoming a building? Bob Newhart made the claim that he was my closest friend. I have never met Bob Newhart. <laughs> Oh, Julia Roberts, you live next to me at the beach. You know that. <laughs> Thanks for all the visits. You're closer than two blocks. <laughs> you have no lines, Julia. Just nod. <laughs> anyway. Uh... He even started calling especially ill-mannered members of his audience hockey pucks. And now you finally understand this joke from the original Toy Story movie. What are you looking at, you hockey puck? While he wasn't the first person to take comedy this route, he is seen as one of the most recognizable and influential insult comics in the genre. This is the guy who started the tall records. He made it possible for the rest of us. I mean, this is the man for me to take a big fat poop on. And by the mid to late 60s, his career was really taking off, uh, making lots of appearances on talk shows and sitcoms. He appeared on Johnny Carson, I think over a hundred times. He made appearances on the Dick Van Dyke Show and the Andy Griffith Show, Adam's Family, The Monsters, Get Smart, I Dream of Jeannie, Gilligan's Island, and so many more that he may as well have had his own show, which of course he did. Simply put, Don Rickles was everywhere on TV. So why not bring him over to another medium, one that my cat seems to enjoy a whole lot, apparently. And this brings us back to Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 139. And normally I'm not the kind of channel who would just, you know, do a dramatic reading of a comic book, but I think we've laid the groundwork of enough context that I can finally give you some content this time. So please, just let me take you on this journey for a couple minutes through this comic book. So right up front, the first nine pages of this comic book are nothing. There's interactions between Jimmy and Superman. Um, there's another new superhero named the Guardian. And there's a bunch of lovable scamps known as the Newsboy Legion who are not important at all to this video and I doubt I'll ever mention them again. You see, they have to stay behind because uh, there's a deadly virus that they got and they need to quarantine. So I'm already immersed. It's around page 10, nearly halfway through this comic when this story actually starts in the offices of evil businessman and media mogul, Morgan Edge. So Edge owns like uh, TV stations and newspapers and things, and he's, he's working on getting a deal with the actual real Don Rickles. But he's worried that his employee, uh, Goody Rickles, will sort of sour everything because he looks like Don Rickles and has the exact same name as Don Rickles, but they're not related in any capacity. Yeah, this is actually really important to note. So Don Rickles and Goody Rickles uh, have never met they don't know each other. They have the same last name inexplicably. They look identical, uh, not related. Goody is also wearing a costume uh, because some of the other people in the office pranked him into doing that. You know, that classic office prank where you trick someone into designing and making and wearing their own costume for a day. It's that and the stapler and the jello. Those are the two iconic office pranks. So rather than fire Goody to secure his deal with uh, Don Rickles, Morgan Edge instead sends Goody away. Goody wants to be this like ace reporter, one who rivals Clark Kent. So Edge sends him to go investigate an alien crash, which is really just uh, an elaborate hoax that Morgan set up, which will be a trap that should hopefully get rid of both Clark Kent and Goody if everything goes right. It, of course it doesn't. So Goody arrives on the site along with Jimmy Olsen, Clark Kent, and the Guardian. But Clark Kent is the only one who gets zapped away by the spaceship. It like teleports him to another dimension. You know, like comic books do. Everyone is then attacked by thugs in case the you know, teleporting alien spacecraft didn't work. And I actually really do like this part of the comic with Goody Rickles because everyone else is fighting. Jimmy is fighting. The Guardian is fighting. But Goody's down here just sort of talking to himself. Oh my God, what have I done? Clark Kent was was dull, but he didn't deserve to go like that. Lots of fighting, lots of fighting. There's Clark, inside, cautious, but dull. And then I press a button and poof, more fighting, more fighting, more fighting. And then there I was, flashy, cute. And then he eventually finally gets into the fight for real. I just think that's really funny. But then the sort of a leader of the bad guys, a, a man named Ugly, he grabs Jimmy Olsen, brings the rest of the fight to a halt and sort of takes everyone else hostage. The Newsboy Legion use a little man to help them escape quarantine. 
It's not important. As hostages, Jimmy, Goody, and the Guardian are now eating dinner. That's very nice of the bad guys. I mean, they're kidnappers, but they're not evil. Whoops, sorry. I just turned the page and learned that all the food they ate is laced with ex explodey chemicals. If this crew does not find the antidote in 24 hours, they will combust and die. And the story ends on this cliffhanger, asking the question, will the real Don Rickles Panic? That's right, it's not just one Don Rickles comic, it's two of them. Are you ready for this? Two Rickles. So this was issue number 139, and the story continues in issue number 141. What happens in issue number 140? Nothing. It's just a whole bunch of reprints of old Superman stories. It's totally unconnected from this. It just adds a lot more confusion, which I find very funny. Something else that I find confusing is how Goody's costume on the covers is green and purple, but inside of the comics, it's purple and gold, and both covers do this. I mean, he's really small down here, but you can see him, he's green still. Either way, let's just finish up this comic story. It starts with some really great collages. If you're interested in Kirby collages, I made a video about them earlier this year. What's happening here is that Clark Kent is trapped in this sort of otherworldly, bizarre dimension. Meanwhile, the Guardian is going to find an antidote for all the bad food they ate. None of this matters. I want Rickles. Why does that sound like a disease? Okay, so finally, two issues in on page eight, our boy Don makes his first appearance. Other than the covers, he's on both of the covers. And it seems like Don Rickles is being harassed by kind of horny fans. Sign this, Don. Write something weird and nasty. Oh, insult me, Don. Say anything, a sentence, a word. Oh, sorry, people are gonna yell at me for folding over the comic book that way. Now, everything that ensues after this is about as close as we're gonna get to Don Rickles actually like heckling people, doing the thing that he's famous for. Someone asks, are you all right, Don? And he says, sure, dum-dum, I'm just down here doing push-ups, rehearsing for a big scene in the emergency ward. Morgan Edge uh, says, I should have foreseen this, taking disciplinary precautions. And Don says, tell it here, tell it to the little veins popping out of my head, the little aggravated veins. Don starts insulting Morgan Edge, saying, I heard about you, Mr. Smoothie on the outside, Mac the Knife on the inside. Be yourself, lad. Say something filthy. I mean, look, I said this was the closest we get to Don Rickles insulting people. It's not very good. It's definitely not as good as Don can... I did the comic again. It's definitely not to the caliber that Don Rickles could do in real life, which makes this whole thing very disappointing, to be honest. Like, we've been building up Don Rickles appearing for two issues now. His face is on the cover of both of these. And by the time he does appear, he's not even that funny. So just to finish it up, the Guardian finds the antidote, uh, the Superman escapes the dimension. Again, None of this matters. What does matter is that Goody and Jimmy bust down the doors to Morgan Edge's office to confront him. It's not really explained why they went to Morgan Edge's office. Uh, they could have helped, you know, get the antidote, but instead uh, they don't. The sort of loose explanation given is that Goody thinks he's going to die anyway, so he wants to go tell off his boss one last time. And then as if the comic wasn't already disappointingly unfunny, they decide to do the least funny thing imaginable. So this whole story, right? It's leading up to we can't have Goody Rickles meet Don Rickles. Morgan's trying to kill Goody specifically for that reason. What's gonna happen if these two meet? I did the comic thing again, I'm sorry. The joke they end up doing is that really annoying thing that like a four-year-old would do where you just repeat everything that someone says to you. I'm back, Mr. Edge, and now that I'm dying, I can find the nerve to really tell you what I think of. I'm back, Mr. Edge, and now that I'm dying, I can find the nerve to really tell you what I think of. You look like me. You look like me. It is quite possibly the laziest form of comedy. It's not funny. Uh, thankfully, Goody starts to explode. Now that's funny. But at the last second, the Guardian shows up with the antidote and everyone is saved, unfortunately. Okay, this next part is genuinely the funniest part of this entire story, all right? So Don Rickles is not having a good day. 
obviously. He decides to take a breather, you know, sit down, catch his breath, and the moment that he does, boom! Clark Kent returns from that dimension that he was stuck in. I love this image. Seeing how small Don Rickles is compared to this enormous boom of Clark Kent poofing back into existence is amazing visual comedy. Jack Kirby, you nailed it on this one. A weird thing though, Clark Kent like greets everyone as if he's a medieval knight. Hail friends, Clark Kent greets you from the vast unknown. Okay. And the very last moments of this comic are also quite wonderful. So uh, the bomb squad is called because they think that uh, Goody and Jimmy Olsen could still explode. They won't, they're fine. The squad's just a little late. But as Morgan Edge tries to explain that to the bomb squad, Don Rickles uh, has had enough of this day. So Morgan Edge says, uh, we did have an emergency here, but it was brought under control. And immediately interrupting, Don Rickles says, that's a lie. I I'm the bomb and I'm primed to blow. Get me out of here. Stop me from killing. Tick, 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 tick. Hear that? Grab me, but handle me with care. And the comic ends with, if you've enjoyed this visit from Don Rickles, you'll cringe. I'm going to just stop reading there. Uh, that seems accurate. Sparta's allergic to bad storytelling. These comics are not good. So the natural question to ask then is, why were these comics made? Why was this story told? I don't know. Nobody does. Jack Kirby was a fan of Don Rickles and they got permission from Rickles to use his likeness in these comics. But where did Goody come from? It just seems like a baffling decision altogether. But on the surface, this was not a bad idea. Uh, comic books where superheroes meet comedians was a very commonplace thing back then. And Don Rickles was famous for roasting celebrities. He was very close friends with Frank Sinatra and would never let the insults let up. It's all over, Frank. I know you don't like to hear that. Gone. He loved picking on big name players and Superman is arguably the biggest name in the superhero space. You would think that the story would be super simple, right? Like Jimmy and Superman uh, briefly run into Don Rickles for a couple pages and he shouts out some insults at Superman and they all have a good laugh before Jimmy and Supes go off to fight a crime or something. But Don Rickles never meets Superman in these comics. There is no sweet, sweet roasting of the Man of Steel. I mean, reportedly the original idea for these was supposed to be exactly that, just a really brief cameo with some insults. Not two entire issues with Don's face slapped on both of them, but like I said, Jack Kirby was a huge fan of Don Rickles and had an imagination that just ran wild. Thus, he created this bloated comic book story that hardly anyone remembers. Don Rickles remembered though, and he hated these. Although to be fair, he did seem to hate most things. Wait, do you think, do you think that was the point of these? Do you think Jack Kirby wanted to create something so awful that Don Rickles would insult him for it? Well, I guess we'll never know. If only there was a clue inside these comics that could enlighten us. Oh, insult me, Don. Say anything, a sentence, a word. One final thing that I wanted to say is I started this video by saying how my previous Jimmy Olsen video really tanked, didn't really do me any favors, but that's not necessarily true. Comic book artist Steve Lieber found my old Jimmy Olsen video and uh, liked it, I guess, and sent me a signed copy of this. This is the Jimmy Olsen series that he worked on with Matt Fraction and Nathan Fairbairn. It is truly a delight. If you have not read this comic, you absolutely must. It is clever, it is funny, it is uh, just a treat. So thank you, Steve, for sending this my way and apologies for this video. Uh, that goes to Steve and all of you. If you inexplicably want to support more videos like this, uh, you can do so over on uh, Patreon. There's a link in the description for that. You can get your name listed on screen here like A Filthy Casual, Amanda Trisdale, BKBW, C. McCartney Smith, Christopher Lang, DeCassowary, Donna Bark, Edwin Latour, Eric Ketchum, Eric Pato, Everett Parrott, Jeffrey Roscoe, Jack Fien, uh, Jonathan and Megan Pearson, Jonathan Lenowski, 
Julian Louisa Latour. I'm so bad at that one. Casper Sieg, Mars Hoddle Dean, Marisa Wilson, Pete Temple, Silva Donut, and the rest of the wonderful nerds who support me over at patreon.com slash nerdsync. I have unintentionally made so many videos about Jack Kirby this year that I've put them all together in a playlist of those videos if you want to watch them. Learn about his Eternals comics, his collage art, and a lot more. Once again, my name is Scott, reminding you to explore your favorite art through curiosity and vulnerability. See ya.